Hey, so, uh, hey, how's it going? I'm John. So philosophy actually means the love of wisdom. Now, I've had a love of wisdom and a love of water for many years. I'm from West Virginia, and I, my childhood was spent most days on the water. This is literally my backyard. And I would fish and canoe almost every day. So I had a very close relationship with water. I loved it. That's one of the reasons I'm a hydrologist now. But I also share this passion with my early ancestors. So back even in the Indus Valley, 5,000 years ago, people understood the importance of water. Knowing where the water is, where it isn't, and how to manage this water was critical for the development of civilizations and helping those civilizations thrive. This is actually not people trying to figure out how to navigate McCormick Center. It's, uh, <laughs> this is Vitruvius. He was discussing one of the first earliest concepts of water theory. Okay, and a few years later, we understood the importance for hydrology, observations are key. So here, the evolution of understanding is bounded by our understanding of technological opportunities and societal needs. In regard to water, both of these are increasing substantially. But the observations truly are key for hydrology. So this is Leonardo da Vinci. So he had this really cool thing where he was trying to measure stream flow velocity. And he also came up with one of the earliest concepts of water cycle, the global water cycle. This guy, Edward Haley, would totally freak out if you saw this building. He definitely knew the, the value of observations, right? But he also came up with the global water cycle. It was a little bit off, but still it was, the foundations were, were key. And he made great advances. <clears throat> so a few years later, Leroy Sherman had this really cool concept of a hydrograph, sort of assessing how a river basin behaves through precipitation. So we've taken these foundational concepts and then we've applied them to the vantage point from space. This is the first image ever taken just a few years later, 1946. And we see this unique vantage point from space that we get from satellites. Now we look at the future, but not just yet. This is also 1946, this is the ENIAC computer. Your cell phone in your pocket is nearly 200 million times faster than this room size computer. So our ability to collect data, manipulate data, and assess data is totally changing. The way that we observe the world is totally changing as well. The presidential inaugurations in 2005 and 2013 were observed and captured totally differently. So as we move from this data poor to data rich environment, our ability to visualize data and assess data is also evolving. And the way that we address these foundational concepts in hydrology are also continue to evolve and grow. So as we move forward here, with NASA, we have a whole constellation of satellites. 18, I think and counting, of satellites that are looking at different components of the water cycle. This is actually changing in just a few hours with the latest launch of the soil water assessment. <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry, soil water ocean topography mission, 11 hours, 14 minutes, we're gonna throw another bird up in space. So this is also going to give us unprecedented observations of sea level and river height. So if you look at how this is captured in the literature and science, this is just within water resources research from AGU, the number of publications with, sci with satellite and remote sensing in the title continues to increase. In 2002, it's even higher. But when we take these observations and apply them to those foundational concepts of hydrology, we're able to quantify and really push the science forward. These are actually fluxes based on that earliest concept of the water budget. But even more, we can take these and apply them to our societal needs that is really addressing us. For example, water, water or wildfire and water and hydrology. Even more, as the global population is approaching 7 billion people and climate change impacts are being realized, on a daily basis and affecting more people, the importance of being able to do this is very, very real. So I leave you with this last one. This is the last hydrograph. Now we're able to take these advances in technology and actually forecast what may happen so we can improve decision-making capabilities. So the challenge is with you. You are now the new water philosophers. And I leave you with this. Go and talk to your neighbors, observe the world, and continue to do philosophy. Thanks so much.